episode 55 of the 580 show we're back with our first episode in 2022 what's up boys what's up good morning guys excited riley looks very awake dante looks asleep too i'm fine i'm fine i'm good i had that that one drink like that we talk about before that we don't get free ads out anymore so like i'm i'm wide awake baby let's go I respect that. Well, we'll we'll start with that. Inside, we always kind of start with inside five eighty stuff. The pre workout is doing amazing right now. Um, this has kind of been like the last week. Real obviously, like not a lot of shipments going out. Like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you know, day after Christmas. But I've gotten so many, like I guess, testimonials with. Um, people have had enough time to kind of try it for a week or two weeks now. And the comments that I've gotten and the feedback I've gotten are seriously amazing. And people tell me they're customers for life. People telling me it's the best pre-workout they've ever tasted, best working. Um, it's seriously been awesome. I said, the only thing is that was, uh, that's like a backhanded compliment every time is when they say, I didn't expect it to be this amazing. I'm like, well, you should have, but we talked about that last week, how much time and effort we put into like sampling it, reviewing it, renewing it, everything like that. So yeah, mixed berries on the horizon and then uh, some more supplements to add to the line. So hopefully you, uh, you get your hands on some 580 supplements in 2022 and, and help us grow to, you know, what we, you know, what we envision this being. So. What do you guys guys got anything on horsepower? I was just gonna say, yeah, I heard somebody last last night specifically when we after we were done training, it was like, dude, that pre workout. You're like, yeah, man, what's up? I'm like, freaking tastes awesome. And I was like, that's that's awesome to hear. Like that was yeah, the whole yeah. purpose of launching the product, right? And then we were with another member too by the like the water fountain, and I could smell the remnants of it. I was yeah, like, that's yeah. horsepower. Like it's pretty cool that you can identify it based on the smell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you know what I like too is that the people are saying how much they can feel it. Like they feel the buzz, they feel the energy, but we didn't overload it with caffeine. Right. Like I think I think like in pre-workouts it's very easy to just put 350 milligrams of caffeine in it nowadays just right. I feel like the caffeine bar just keeps getting raised and raised and raised. Yeah. And um I kind of take pride that we didn't have to, I mean, it's still high stim for sure, but like that we didn't have to go like overboard and be in the threes for caffeine and people are still feeling that buzz and enjoying it and everything like that. So yeah. That beta alanine baby. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. So is there anything else with horsepower? Keep buying it. You, you keep moving. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, just DM. You guys can go to 580barbell.com. There's a pre-workout tab up at the top. You can hit it. Eventually, that'll just say supplements. And then, uh, you know, uh, you can order from there. If you're local, just hit me up. Uh, you don't have to pay for shipping. So, yeah. And we will be at the Gladiator Games. It's a CrossFit competition on February 5th. And we'll be popping up all over. Uh, in 2022 hopefully so powerlifting crossfit strongman you know wherever we'll have us hopefully we get in some stores in 2022 as well um buying some so this is for 580 members i guess but i'm buying some new equipment for the gym Uh, i got a rogue rhino belt squat coming soon so a standalone like cable tower belt squat it's from the people i talk to and everything it's kind of the you know uh it's really heavy duty. A lot of people want it. We have a lever belt squat already, but going to get like the cable one. It's a lot more you can do on it and stuff like that. And it's free motion. So I really like that. Um, and hopefully going to get some, get some other stuff in here soon, but yeah, new equipment coming in 2022. Hopefully, uh, this time next year, the gym looks even bigger and better than it does right now. So it's going to be hard to do. It's going to be hard to do. I have a carp. Oh, I also have a carpenter working on a uh, four-level Atlas stone platform for us. So it's going to be forty. Crap. Let me look at the dimensions really quick. I think I can't remember if it starts at forty-six or forty-four or forty-eight. 
one of those two. Something we've talked about forever, so it'll be nice. It's to 40, find it. 48, 52, 56, and then 60. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna, and it'll have like uh, storage underneath to put the stones. So nice. I'm genuinely asking because I don't know. Is that is there like a standard height when you have like a running platform like that, like where you want like go from higher to lower? Is there like a standard height for each one that they use generally for competitions? Typically, typically it's it depends on the show, and like it obviously depends on how many like uh, platforms they there are. But I've seen like a I've seen like a ten stage that starts at forty and goes up like two inches, you know, all the way like or like starts at like forty four and goes like 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, you know, as high as it can. Typically, you start at the highest one because that's the lowest stone, or that's the you know the easiest stone, the lightest stone, and then you go to the lowest one, but it's the heaviest stone. But there's definitely no standardization with a run. That's kind of that would be kind of impossible to do. Yeah, but. It seems like men typically load to around 52 and women typically load to around 48. So you'll have to ask the meat director. Yeah. Don't do that. I'll never have stones at my show. So I'm doing it. Um, all right, boys. Well, we're in 2022 now. Well, we will be. We're filming this before 2022. See you next year. Don't do that. Okay. I hate that. I heard that at the gym yesterday 50 times from Frank. Yeah, I was going to say Frank Call probably said at least 30 times to me. Call in. Um, what are what are your guys' goals for, uh, you know, training, life, everything like that? If you're listening, send us your goals too. Riley? I was kind of thinking about this. I was, like, thinking about numbers I wanted to hit on certain things like the normal like things that we track like log and everything but then I thought about it and I was like I don't know if that's a good idea because even if I put a number and then I hit it early or I don't ever hit it it's like it's kind of you're just putting your mind on that that one thing that you should just be focusing on getting better instead of focusing on a singular number because I feel like a lot of people get caught up in that like oh I want to do this and uh, a couple months and if you don't hit it then your mental state just goes downhill or if you do hit it early and then you're like all right well now what do I do so I think I just need to focus on staying consistent and just getting stronger generally because if I put enough like if especially on like five different things like I feel like that's so hard to focus on five different max effort lifts and trying to hit a specific number for all of that so I think I just need to st- stay focused on being consistent and just getting better overall. Cause I need to, I need to get better and everything. Yeah. When you put a number on a pedestal, it, it like you take that number and you chase it and you chase it and you chase it. And then like, you don't accept anything that's less than, but let's say that your goal is way too optimistic. Right. And now you, let's say you go 10 pounds short, but your goal was 40 pounds over what you already had. You still make great progress in that 30 pound mm-hmm. jump. Right. Yeah, so like, yeah. I definitely think that's a good point. You, if you put that number on a pedestal, now you're looking at it and you're like, wow, I don't, I, I didn't make, I didn't get anywhere just because you didn't hit the number you wanted. When in reality, you, you made great progress. Good I mean, point. numbers are cool. There, there's all, there's always those ones you want. And sure. it's cool. It's cool if you hit them, but I don't know if you should be specifically focused on that. That's sure. just my personal opinion. Good point. I also, uh, I think Riley made a good point. Um, like there's those, you guys know those like filters that, or I don't know if filters, right? Template that yeah, goes around and it's like 2021 versus 2022 and like what you want to hit. And it's like <clears> five <throat> to seven lifts. I think if you do like five, like for me, like I'd like to hit like a deadlift PR or like a log PR, you know, I think I'm just, I'm actually just using examples, but if I think if you have a number goal, you should have one, maybe two. Cause I think if you have like five to seven, I, you're kind of just guessing at that point you're you know like really if you're if you're chasing a number you really need to focus on that lift a lot of the time you know so it's like how do you know if you're chasing a log pr how do you have any idea what your actual deadlift's going to be too you know what i mean i th- i think those templates i mean they're cool because you can kind of like look back at it after the year but i think more than not it's going to be disappointing because you set seven goals instead of like one to two really solid goals yeah there, so i think that's there. They're useful for what they are, but um, you kind of have to keep that in perspective, right? Like 
it's good to put something on paper and chase it, but um, you can, you have to be realistic with yourself too. So I feel like that could be hard too for strongman because what if you set yourself for a goal of the log and then you sign up for a show later with like Axel, so you're not really working on log. Right. So that just sets you back even more. But I feel like someone for powerlifting might be a little different because you just do the big three. So True. teach their own and everything, but good point. <laughs> So what are your goals, Riley? You didn't even answer your goals. I said, I think I just need to, I mean, I say this a lot, but I just need to generally keep getting better. I mean, I think it could even be, I mean, I'm not a coach or a programmer, so I don't know this specifically, but I think like even m- maybe trying to hit APR every so often, and I don't know how long that time should be. I don't think it needs to be a year just because it's the new year. Like you could say, I want to hit a, a new PR every four weeks or something like that and it doesn't have to be one specific lift either it could just be your goal to just keep hitting prs and just keep getting better hell yeah sounds like you just want sounds like he just wants his training to keep going up so you so uh and you're competing at battle the bridge on june 4th oh yeah my goal my goal for that That is to not come in last that's my (laughs) that's my first goal all right hey there you go there you go your class is going to be huge for that show. It always is. There's like, well, it was supposed to be a goal and then it dwindled down, but I think you're going to have, it usually is. I think you're going to have close to 15 in your class because <laughs> everyone that messaged me about like what class are, cause we're, we split it into like heavyweight and lightweight novice. Everyone that's messaged me so far is lightweight novice, which is what you'll be. So there's yeah, 22, be- 22 novice men right now. Yeah, so it'll split into half. But Dante Frawley. Go ahead, Dante. Well, for me, I like setting short term goals. And right now, my short term goal is to make the middleweight class for PA Dutch in March 12th. And um, I mean long term goals, I like I like to set the short term goal because if I don't hit the short term goal, then it changes a lot of things for the long term goal. But if I do hit the short term goal, then long term goal would probably be try to make it to the clash or osg for middleweight down the line but like i said short-term goal first and then we'll start elaborating um i mean like riley said generally just getting stronger working on getting better um i've said before conditioning is a concern of mine uh, i've been putting more emphasis on it um, during event days but i think i need to get a little bit better at it during my weekly training days too um, I'm doing battle at the bridge on June 4th with my boy Riley. Um, and then I'm hoping that I can get a nationals bid. Um, and I want to see how I stack up at the national show. Um, that's kind of my big concerns for 2022. Um, I mean, I think this year I may actually submit some videos to the OSG qualifier, whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, do I expect to qualify? Yeah, we'll see. Um, probably not, but, uh, you never know what's going to happen between now and usually like August timeframe. So we've got about eight months to just generally get stronger and bigger and faster and more conditioned and we'll see where I'm at. So, but, um, battle with the bridge and nationals are going to be my two, uh, main shows. There might be another one sprinkled in there too, that I haven't decided on yet, but that's my goals. Nice. Mine are, uh, so Training wise inside the gym, I just I don't have numbers in mind. I just want to get my overhead better. That's all I care about. Just get improving my overhead. Just want it to get up, want it to be more competitive, want to make sure I don't zero overhead events at shows. Um in strongman competitions, um wanna to go to nationals and improve from last year uh significantly. And I am signed up my biggest, my loftiest goal, but something that I think I could do. I'm signed up for Clash on the Coast 80 qualifiers. So in it's on it's only two weeks away is my first qualifying event. So it's two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks away. It's uh comes out on Sunday and I have till Wednesday night to uh put them in. So I'll have to do the event, try it, submit my score, three events, and I have to be in the top 10 out of everyone to qualify. So that's a lofty goal. I guess we'll know pretty quick if I meet that or not. I don't expect to, but I'm going to try my best to do it, you know, give it everything I have. Right. Um, 
And then, like I said, just improve at nationals later on in the year. I might just throw into OSG because it's fun. And I think that's, I mean, that's world's strongest man for anyone that's not at world's strongest man. So, um, and then outside I'm getting married. So do that. Ooh. Get married in September. Shout out Ali. Go to Riley's wedding. He's getting married as well. Yeah, you kind of threw me under the bus there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're talking you weren't going to talk or... about it. So somebody had to. My biggest goal is to get all this wedding stuff done. Cause I suck. And my wife sucks at it too. We, like all sending all the invites and guest lists and food and colors and flower. Oh my God. I want to just die. But It'll be yeah. worth it when the day comes. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. true. That's what they say. It's I'm true. really excited for that. And they're well. done that. So yeah, we'll have a 580 show uh, wedding podcast edition later on this year. Can't wait. I get married on a Sunday. So the pod's dropping while I'm getting married during the wedding yeah that's fitting right when you say i do the podcast drops i'll be there ready to drop (laughs) it (laughs) that's not happening seven o'clock september 4th um but yeah that's cool so if anyone's listening you know send us your goals too appreciate it yeah we got a good outlook going for the four of us but you know let's see what everybody else is doing too furby's got a powerlifting meet um, there's some other porks got a powerlifting meet in a couple of weeks, and then he's got nationals in March. A lot of a lot of stuff going on with our members at 580. Yeah, so. that's a good really point. Cool. I think it's I yeah. think this year, like I think 2022, 2022. I just talked about a speech impediment. Geez. Yeah. I think 2022 is gonna be a huge year for 580. Like we have a lot of people involved in strongman now. Just look at our timeline. Like we have so we sold out a show over six months ahead of time with 85 competitors with zero promotion from anyone else. That's something I'm so proud of. Like it was just us. Like it was literally just us. We're not on a website. We're not just us. 85 competitors. Um, We have everyone who's competing in strongman, everyone who's competing in powerlifting. Um, We're going to be getting new equipment, um, you know, not not just for strongman. We're going to be getting just new equipment for general gym goers. The supplement line, I can't wait to see where that's at by the end of 2022. You know, as as we keep learning about apparel and stuff like that, I can't wait to see where that goes. I can't. There's just so much stuff. I just like our YouTube. Are you my? That's a lofty social media goal for me. I don't care about my personal social medias, but uh, YouTube over a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022. Hit over a thousand. We are at, I think, one hundred nineteen now. Yep. Yep. So next, I think we can do it. The next YouTube video that we put out, you guys are going to enjoy. That's I don't know if it's going to be the next, but well, it's whenever we put this one yeah. out, it's going to be great. Yeah, <laughs> that one might do it by itself. Yeah, honestly, it's going to be great. Um, anything else on your guys' goals? Anything else come to mind? 580. What do you guys want to see at 580 in 2022? Um, Battle at the Bridge is going to be dope. We've already talked about it a bunch of times. Um, it's going to be a great show. Uh, I want to see how people respond to signing up. To, not signing up, but like how people respond to the presentation that we put on. Um, things to follow with it. Are there? Is there interest in another show? Like you've mentioned before on the podcast, potentially hosting a winter show. Um with enough interest, that could be a good goal to have a winner in a summer show. Um, We're going to have the, a winner show every year. Right. So there you go. Um, the supplement line, um, running around to all the different competitions, setting up booths, talking to people. Um, yeah, That's what we got to do. You know what I mean? We've mm-hmm. got to get in front of people and talk to them about horsepower and say, like, look, uh, give us a try. Give it a taste. Here's a sample. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have to be in front of strength athletes. Right. So um, it's going to be great. It's going to be busy, but it's exciting because, you know, we're hopping in a car and we're going to try to promote something we care about, which is pretty cool. So, right. Yeah. We, what, uh, what's the, I, I what's the, the go ahead. I was going to say, what do you think a, a good timeline is to like get like an Arnold booth? Do you have anything like that for a future goal, like down the line? It's hard to say right now. It's really hard to say. Oh, you'll be we'll competing. Be you'll be compete. You'll be competing at the Arnold soon. Enough time for a booth, anyways, right? 
But uh, I forgot to mention it when Dante said PA Dutch is that uh, is that we'll have a booth there as well. So if yeah. you're going to be out, if you're out on the other side of PA, you can come and hang out with us. We like we have a bunch of people competing as well. So that's good. We'll be at I don't know what Pork's powerlifting meet is called in Keystone. on January 23rd but we'll have we'll have a full box of we don't have an official booth but we'll be bootlegging it there uh I messaged the director about getting a booth there and he never got back to me so yeah. I'll I'll be selling it's I think it's the collegiate it's the Keystone Cup what Keystone Cup so it's That's the it's Pennsylvania yeah. Pennsylvania powerlifting championships yeah out at state college so rather wait for that one yeah so it's only that's only a couple weeks away but uh, but we'll be out there. Pork told me to bring a bunch of supplements because he has people that want to buy them there. So that's awesome. Uh, yep. Just like Frawley said, just getting in front of more and more people. That's the goal. If you know we go, if we go to the power to meet and we get one new customer because of it, that's worth it to me, honestly. Right. So right. just keep spreading that word. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's go into some questions. And if anything pops up, uh, oh, we already, I should have waited for the questions because someone asked, what are all your goals for 2022? So we definitely <laughs> well, already answered that. Went into in-depth. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely answered your question. You're welcome. I will say also, so Jerry asked that question. Jerry. I will say shout out to Jerry for representing 580 barbell so much on zola's podcast this week because that yeah. that really meant a lot i mean he he spoke so highly of the gym and all of us and everything like that so that means a lot we love you jerry yeah we do love you we do love you jerry um log pressing tips so don't look at I, me i was gonna say this, this might not be the group yeah this is probably question. the worst panel of all time to ask log pressing tips but right uh i mean it depends how it definitely depends how, where you're at. Like, have you never touched a log before or have you like, are you, have you been using a log for a long time? If you're asking, you probably haven't touched the log that much. Um, the biggest thing it's almost like, I mean, it's like anything getting your form down, but the log is so goofy and it's such just a weird cumbersome item that sitting up on your shoulders, it wants to pull you forward. I would really, really just work on positioning um, and get that, get that perfect and get really comfortable with the clean. There's a lot of YouTube videos on the clean. I would say watching up the first time everyone touches the log, the thing they focus, they, the thing they struggle with the most is the clean 99.99% of the time. So really learn how to clean the log. So you're not curling it. Um, and then that'll just set your whole press up for success. Learn how to pick it up and get it to your shoulders correctly. I think once you get a log to your shoulders, obviously it wants to pull you forward because it's it's a really big item. But once you get it to your shoulders, it feels good because mm -hmm. you're already up higher than you normally be, would be with a press. It's more like an incline bench when you're pressing it than a normal standing overhead press. But I, my biggest tip, and you guys can say what if you guys have other tips, but my biggest tip would be learn the clean and hammer it. Mine was the same exact thing. Yeah. Every that's like you said, every single person that starts with it, they just when they try to clean it, they basically just try to curl it, which is understandable. It's hard to learn that how to do that correctly and efficiently, but that's the biggest part of it because a lot of people have the strength to press it over their head once they get it up there. But that's all that's the hard part about it is that you have to just pick it up it. from the ground. If they if it wasn't hard, then they would let you just do it out of a rack or something. I told that's someone at the gym, I told someone at the gym this week, I was like, you might be able to press whatever you can press, but Cleaning a log is unlike any other movement you've ever done. Even mm -hmm. if you've done Olympic cleans, Olympic power cleans, it's nothing like that. Like no, the no. roll up your chest is completely different than anything you've ever done. So like, you can't just assume, Oh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll just pick up a log and do it. It's, it's not that simple. So yeah. like Riley said, and Josh said, if you, the hardest part's getting it to the rack position for sure. It's called a clean but it's not like a clean in the, in the normal sense of a clean in this, in the traditional sense. Right. It's a, it's a more, I like when I coach it, I coach it more as a roll up your belly. You know, you want to have it hugged tight. It all, it all breaks down to that lap position. As soon as you pick it up and you put it on your lap, 
that's where you get set up for success because if your elbows are way far behind your wrists, you're going to end up curling it, all that stuff. But if you have a more in-depth question, man, just shoot us a, just shoot us a DM on 580. I'll send you some good YouTube videos. They have some really good ones. Um, what? I don't know if I understand this question. You guys can help me out. It's from our boy Furby. Furby. What is strength slash strong for the average gym goer? I think I know what he's saying. Like, what's like a standard baseline? Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to say. Yeah, I think we were talking about the other day when Crawley was talking about deadlifting. We were talking about four yard dashes and stuff. 225, 315, 405. 225 bench, 315 squat, 405 deadlift. That's that, that covers pretty much every weight, every body once, weight. Once you're past those three numbers for bench, squat, deadlift, nobody cares anymore besides other people that lift weights. Nobody that, cares. That's a good point. You can tell your aunt that you're a state record holder in powerlifting <laughs> and that you, 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 everything's done. Once you hit those three lifts, it's all just bros that lift it, lift like you. Nothing else mm-hmm. matters. Yeah, you can say you deadlift 405 or like. 635 and they're not going to know the difference i think if you're i i'm gonna i'm gonna add to that i think if you're a big boy like 300 plus so like if if that's like the average size human i'm saying like me like the big boys because i was always big i think you need to have a 315 bench 405 squad 500 deadlift but that's that's uh an above average size human so get with that it's also like Strength, strength really does. Is it eight man strong that has that brand that the saying that strength has many forms? Yes, mm-hmm. so I love that saying. That's a great quote because mm-hmm. it's honestly true. Like, <clears throat> like I can go down the gym and pull 650, but not bragging, but some, but some dude that's the same weight as me can do like a calisthenic like thing from a barbell that like I would fall on my face if I did it, you know. So it's like if we're talking about strength in the, in the form of static strength, that's what we mean by those numbers, right. but there's people that can deadlift 700, but they can't tie their shoes, you know? So it's like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, how strong are they past, you know, picking it's up all a relative runner. for what yeah. you want. Right. One of our, one of our buddies at the gym too, can't deadlift 500 pounds. You guys know who I'm talking about, but he'll freaking fly with a yoke. Yep. Right. So Isn't like that crazy. Yeah. So like, it, it it is relative and it has many forms strength is so weird how like people too don't understand how how uh dependent strength is based on your leverages too like some people can be a hell of a deadlifter and i'm not saying like that they don't ha- put a lot of work in to be a hell of a deadlifter but having longer arms and just a crazy debt like leverage for deadlifting everyone's built differently right. so like compare yourself to yourself don't compare yourself to this person just because they can deadlift more you probably can squat or or bench more than them you know what i mean with with some good work but yeah frank's an idiot he can frank can't deadlift 500 pounds but he can farmer carry it it, it makes no sense you still have to pick that up off the ground it makes no sense frank can frank takes 15 seconds to pick 250 a hand on farmer's carries, but then once he moves, he's he sprints with it. It makes no sense. But yeah, I love call. I knew you weren't gonna mention Frank. I had to call him out. <laughs> he's one of the best yoke yoke runners I've ever met. Yep. He's fast, man. He moves. He stinks at squat. Yeah. And deadlift. Yeah, you stink, Frank. But he's good at overhead. Yep. True. <laughs> Whew, this one, this question brought me feels, Riley. Oh boy. Big Ben's last home Monday night game. His last home game this Monday night. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on Big Seven's career. I'm gonna get I'm gonna choked up. Him. I'm gonna miss him. I turned down tickets to this game about 25 times earlier this season, and I'm very mad I did now. Um Big Ben is the only pro athlete that I truly care about and that I, that I've, I don't want to say looked up to, but that I'll be emotional when he retires. And that's my thoughts. He's the best Pittsburgh athlete of all time. And anyone can say whatever they want about that. He's the best, greatest Pittsburgh athlete. Why are you guys laughing? I think he's the greatest Pittsburgh athlete of all time. Well, that was fine. But then you said you guys can say whatever you want about that. That's what's funny. Well, who would you pick? Mario Lemieux? 
Uh, I would say a lot of people would pick Sidney Crosby. Big Ben. I'm on your I'm on your side though. No, I like Ben. I like Ben. Yeah, everyone laughs. No one's got anything else to say. Best Pittsburgh athlete of all time, <clears throat> in my opinion. Besides Josh I think, Hendrickson. I think Steeler fans, being the entitled brats we are, they're gonna have a big wake up call next year when we play the Browns week one and Mason Rudolph runs out under seven. We already had this happen when Ben was out for the year and we had Duck but, and Mason Rudolph. But he's year. always but he always stands in the shadows. You know, seven's always coming back. Now he's actually going to be done, and we're going to have freaking Mason Rudolph. We're going to waste a draft pick on some idiot like Sam Howell or something from North Carolina. He's going to stink. And you're all going to say, Josh, you know what? You're right. Episode 55 of the 580 show. <laughs> I laughed I think, when I said. I think the big thing that I'm going to say, like, I think this is pretty true to most Steeler fans. Most Steeler fans say, hey, if Ben's playing, we got a shot. And I, we're losing that. We don't have that anymore. That's right. Good. Like we always say, Hey man, Ben's playing. We got a shot. Right. If we don't have one, we're not going to have that anymore. <laughs> you know, like, cause I don't know. I don't know who that guy's going to be. They so, don't make them like that. That's the thing. People no. don't realize they don't just, you don't like that. Some like people like my, like people that were born in the sixties, fifties, they've had two lifetime quarterbacks with Bradshaw and Ben. That doesn't a happen. lot of franchises will get that get one in their entire franchise. We've had two in the last, you know, however long. Well, and it was twenty some years between Bradshaw and Ben too, mm-hmm. right? Like that's so, what I'm saying. Am I gonna be like? Am I gonna be like 87 and like half dead <laughs> in a hospital when when we have an, another run at a Super Bowl? That's what makes it. And I think about all the memories, like I'll go and watching the Super Bowl with my friends. Being at the game when he threw the winning touchdown to Mike Wallace against the Packers. Remember that touchdown, Santonio Holmes. Yep. I mean, just it's you, we've literally since I can remember watching football, I've watched Big Ben Roethlisberger. Yep. Pretty yeah, much. like I remember like Tommy Max and Cordell Stewart a little bit, but like actually remember it's always been right. Like I only comprehend Big Ben Roethlisberger as my quarterback, so it's yep. like that's insane to think about. Like just yep. think about, we're in high school. We're in middle school. Ben Roethlisberg was still the quarterback. Yep. And now we're we getting were in, married. We were in fourth grade. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I remember the Cordell Stewart and Tommy Maddox days, and they were not fun. They were not fun. Tommy Gunn. Thank oh. God. I'll never forget when Ben took over for Tommy Gunn. They went 15-1 and one that year. Yep. See, like, that's the stuff I'll never 15 forget. 15-0 as a starter. Yep. 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 Crazy. And so ben, we won a second year. Ben, thank you. We appreciate your, your 18 you, ben. years. We appreciate you, and you are welcome on this podcast anytime, Ben. More than welcome on the 580 show. I'm not at the gym, too. Thank you. Come to 580 Barbell, please. What do you think Ben could log press? Probably 300. At least 300. I, I don't know. He's banged up. He's ben would get hurt. 280. Sure. It doesn't have a bad shoulder. I would hope so. He's been in the NFL for 18 years. <laughs> He's been throwing fucking piss missiles for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I can't with you guys. Well, but it doesn't matter. You know what? Because we're going to make the playoffs still, so it doesn't matter. Steelers sure. are going to make the playoffs. Win the next two. Taking two. Taking two, Riley. Who do you guys got to win the college football playoffs the, tonight? Alabama versus, versus Cincinnati. Cincinnati and Michigan versus uh, my Georgia. Mind, my mind tells me Alabama and Georgia. My heart tells me Cincinnati and Georgia because Michigan. I think, I think outright Bama versus Michigan. I pray. I agree with that. I can get with that too. I think Georgia got exposed a little bit. You don't watch football. Yeah, I do. No, not often, but I do watch. You asked who was playing. (laughs) Like I said, not often. Can you name any (laughs) of the four teams' coaches? Hardball. Yeah, well, that was Dallas. Chief. What's his first name? <laughs> which Arba is it? Dallas. Which Arba? No, no, that's it. No, no, no. Get off it. <laughs> which Arba? <laughs> oh, shit. Well, it hurts the left. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm still, hurt, I'm still hurting from that. Abu. All right, there's four teams left. Them at home. Four teams left in the playoff. Who's taking it? 
right now you have to pick one team to win of the four. Who is it? Alabama. Alabama. I mean, that's the easy. They're the worst say, team in college yes. football, but somehow they're going to win. Yes. Pains me God. to say it, but. What, what game was that? Was that against Auburn? Yeah, the Iron Man. Alabama, Alabama was the worst team in college football. They, they were weren't number one. Aside from our team, Riley. We won't talk about that, though. They were the worst team in football that day. Not even close. Pitt lost Any yesterday, too. That sucks. That, I'm not talking about that. It's a great day. Well, we will see you guys with episode 56. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, 2021 has been an awesome year for 580 Barbell. Our first full year as a gym, as a podcast, as everything. So I'm just like I said, I'm so excited to see where 2022 takes us. Uh, you know, I just thank you guys so much for all the support. It's really appreciated. Like I said before, if you guys want to support us, you can uh, go on 580barbell.com, buy horsepower. You can go on our social medias, Instagram, 580barbell, or find us on YouTube at 580barbell. And you can subscribe, follow us, engage with our posts. We always post a Q&A before this podcast, so it always helps to have you guys, you know, throw something in there, help us hear what you guys want to hear. Um, and, yeah, I just – Thank you guys seriously, and and I'm so excited to see where 2022 takes us. So thank you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you next year, guys.